Hi everybody, Tim here. So somebody had asked me what all I have for working on stuff. And my, uh, my history with electronics goes back far, but unfortunately a lot, a lot of dead time in between. I started getting interested in electronics probably in 8th grade. And uh, yeah, when I was a kid that was the one room school house, so we, everybody we were on the same school house with no matter what grade you were in. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Anyhow, then, let's see, around 16, I got out of it and got into cars. And uh, I was in cars for a good long time, probably till I was, I don't know, uh, in my 30s. Uh, I worked at a dealership. Had a good time there. I like that. I like working on cars. Um, so, let's see. Left the dealership and I went back to school for electronics. Did that for a couple of years. Uh, worked for a couple, couple companies, but there's never any money in it. So I got a job completely out of the field. And uh, really didn't do electronics again until... I think my camper got hit by lightning and I was replacing everything in it so I had to do a lot of troubleshooting and I, I started getting more and more interested and then the uh, I got that TS 940 and I started playing with that and I started really getting interested in it again then I got that Golden Eagle and that I think really got me interested in it again and uh, but some of the things that I've collected over time my main probably my main diagnostic toy. Let me see if I can flip this over here. Diagnostic tool is my Fluke Autometer. I think it's an 87. I, I forget what it is. You've probably seen it. 88. You've probably seen it in some of my videos. It's been a good meter. I've used it for years. It's pretty accurate. You know, I bought this from probably the Cornwall guy or the Snap-on guy back back in the 80s, so it was probably $300 back then. Uh, but the, that's been with me all along. And let's see, there's one other meter I have to I have to dig for here. Hang on one second while I dig for this one. If I can find it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of you might remember these. Radio Shack. I got this, and the first night I had it, I blew it up. I uh, was measuring the AC outlets, and I guess I got a little jumpy, and I switched <laughs> switched through all the AC, and wherever I switched, I ate all the diodes inside it. So it took me a while to get that fixed. Uh, but anyhow. I think the most important thing is a good to start out with is a good digital voltmeter and an oscilloscope of some kind. Now, the first one I got is that one up top there. That guy right there. And I actually kind of lucked upon it. I asked someone I was working on something, I asked if I could borrow it. And they had a shop, and uh, they said, "Yeah, yeah, you can borrow these. So keep as long as you need it." And uh, I said, "Okay." And I think the problem was was that the shop, if they had it there, they had to calibrate it, and they didn't want to spend the money to calibrate it. And they also couldn't throw it out because it had a vacuum tube in it, so it was just a pain in the butt to them. So I've unofficially taken hold of it but it's not really mine. I mean I'd have to give it back if they ever ask for it back but I have a feeling it's one of those things that they lost on the inventory and they were just happy that they did. But uh, you know I've seen these run for a hundred bucks. Uh, you can probably find it cheaper than that. Anyhow pick yourself one up. They're, they're really good if nothing else to learn how to use it. And uh, it, it's just it's basically a wideband voltmeter. You can use it for a lot of, a lot of fun stuff and you can actually see what what voltages look like as opposed to just seeing a needle move up and down 
where numbers go up and down. Uh, another thing you'll need is, and I'll come down, some of the stuff you, you, you'll see I have more than one of. Th this is a different voltmeter right here, uh, amp volt ohm meter, and I got that because this power supply, I needed a 12 volt power supply, and it's a lab power supply. It's got 5 volts fixed output and it'll do It'll do roughly 60 volts at I think an amp and a half, or you can gang it and do 30 volts at 3 amps, something along those lines. Uh, but it definitely does mainly for what I need. I have a bigger power supply for running radios if I'm working on those. Uh, but again, you can find that kind of stuff nowadays. The switching power supplies, you can find them for 40, 50 bucks for a big, massive power supply you can run a radio with. Um, but yeah, get yourself a power supply too. And again, it just mainly just start doing a lot of experimenting with it. Build, build circuits. See how you can blow things up. Uh, and I don't mean that uh, as a joke. I think I've blown everything in the world up. Unfortunately, it's usually on things that I didn't want to. But uh, <clears throat> trial and error, because you're going to find out that something works really good in paper or reading on a book. But as soon as you go and sit down and Try to put the solder iron to it. You're going to find all kind of things that I didn't know this would happen. I didn't know that would happen. So uh, just get in there and start doing stuff. But yeah, the, anyhow, the meter above it came. The guy that sold that, uh, I think he wanted 35 bucks for the power supply or 40 bucks, whatever it was. And uh, I could tell it was from like ITT or one of those uh, one of those technical schools. But he had the uh, the voltmeter there to show me that the, the voltage was going up and down, and I think this was the last power supply. He said, eh, if you want the voltmeter, I'll say that for like 20 bucks more or something. So actually, I said, you know what, I'll take it, because I didn't have a bench voltmeter, and not that I need one. The, uh, the Fluke does just fine, but it's kind of neat to have that over there. I just have this all sitting on a cart that I found. Uh, again, I, I wish I had a wider cart or a taller cart, but this works just fine. Uh, then looking over here, and we'll start with that thing in the middle right there. That's a uh, function, or I mean, a frequency counter rather, and uh, it's one of those cheap, like Chinese-made ones. I think I got it from Craigslist, or not Craigslist, uh, Amazon or eBay or something. I don't know how much. It wasn't really that much. It does the job. I mean, you wouldn't probably want to use it for radio alignments, but but I have. And it does the job. Uh, something to have. Do you need one to start out with? No. There's you, there's other ways you can see if things are on frequency. If you're going to start doing radio alignments, yeah, you definitely want something like that. But right below, it was probably the first piece of high-tech equipment that I bought. And it's the Siglent. I think it goes up to uh, 30 megahertz. And it's a uh, signal generator. It does all kind of arbitrary waveforms, AM, FM. It's kind of neat to play with too. Uh, it really wasn't that expensive for what it is. I um, can't remember what it cost. I mean, it took me a little bit of time to get the money for it, but then let's see. That right there is the scope, and that goes up to I forget what was it was about 200 megahertz. Oh, well, that's the max. I mean, you'd never take it to that and expect it to be dependable. But uh, I don't know what frequency it starts. Things start falling off at. But um, it is what it is. It works nice. It's a, uh, a digital scope as opposed to the the old uh, Tektronix that's up top. It's an analog type scope. So the digital scope does a lot of neat things. And I actually was experimenting with it, and I was able to get it. To, almost to act like a, um, oh, what the heck's it called for uh, frequency, uh, on the frequency domain as opposed to the time domain. Um, it'll come to me. Uh, for, for looking at transmitter and transmitter signals, it, it takes a lot of manipulating to get it work like, to work like that, but it's, it's again, it meets the, uh, it's better than nothing. But uh, I do use a scope for a lot of stuff, and like I said, now that I have that plugged in, it's so easy to use, uh, and, and there's, it does so much, and I think I'm probably only scratching the surface of what it can do. 
It's way smarter than I am, I'll tell you that. Um, you know, if you get into it and you get something like that, you start playing around with it, you'll... There's no telling what you'll be able to do. So then let's see, what do we got up above there? I got some... Uh, I got a free, another function generator, and I forget where I got that one. That I think someone actually gave me that. The B, the the BK one. Uh, it only goes to like two megahertz. It's it's more for audio. And then right below it is a, that's a frequency counter I bought. Uh, I got it used. And uh, that one's very accurate. And as you can see the little dot, it's always always on and preheated. But uh, that one I use for when I'm working on a radio for alignment. That's very accurate. I, I don't even remember the specs, but uh, it's that's basically lab grade. And I got it, again, just kind of watching Craigslist. It came. It was the right price. I got it. Do you need one? No. Is it nice to have if you're doing radio alignments? Sure. <laughs> Uh, something like this for $60 or $70, whatever, that'll work just fine. Um, one of the things that as you get older, well, two of the things you'll definitely need. Let me pause this and I'll reposition. Yeah, so one of these is priceless. Uh, just to have around to, to start looking at things. And then when you get older, you'll find that <laughs> they get superseded by that model back there uh, and that's even better for surface mount and uh, you know if you get a splinter and you want to look at your fingers or something uh, you'll see that I have a flute or, uh, sorry a bird back here great meters um, why do I have a bird I think because Everybody has to have a bird meter. Would I recommend it? No. Not unless you want a bird meter. There's a lot of digital more things out there that might be a little bit more expensive that are more dependable if you need to be that that close with uh, with readings. But if not, I mean, I've done quite a bit of alignment kind of things with this. I mean, for the main thing, you're looking at the relativity. When I do this, does it increase? There's not too many things, times when you really have to set the, uh, the wattage at a specific value. You want to know, it's a 100 watt radio. Am I getting 100 or 90 or 95 or 105 out? Um, most of the time. So, again, like I said, it's a good shot meter. And I have one, but you don't need one. If you're going to buy something because you think about it, you, you think, oh, $300 is a lot to spend for a digital meter. Well, each one of those uh, cartridges in the front, the elements, they can be $100, maybe more. So, uh, you know, if you can have it again, that's one of those things where it's a dependable, it's, it's uh, rugged, kind of neat looking. I don't know if it's really necessary, though. Uh, I like it, but again, it took me a long time to get a bird. I, <laughs> I wanted one for years before I could really afford one. So, so then the next thing is the uh, VTVM. I recommend you get one or two of those, take them apart, and work on them. They're vacuum tube. It's good to get to know that kind of stuff. Make sure you know what you're doing before you take them apart. Vacuum tubes use very high voltage, and it's very unforgiving. You don't go probing around the nose with your fingers. Uh, but uh, it, it's a good it's a good starter to learn how to how to work on things. You know, especially those were kits. A lot of those, the uh, Icos and the Heath kits, they were kits. I have a couple of them. Uh, never had them as kits. I always ended up buying them. But you know, off of somebody that didn't want them anymore, mainly because they didn't work. You'll find bad solder joints in them. Uh, you know, from people that really aren't experienced building them, or even some of the shops, possibly. So that takes care of that. So, the last thing, what do you solder with? Okay, I've got this Weller WES-51. It's analog, 
comes with uh, one tip that you can get multiple different tips for it. I've had that for years. I really like it. I think it's pretty dependable. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Uh, Soldering is a little bit of an art. takes a little bit of patience, but once you learn it, it's pretty easy to do. It. There's no, there's no special skill. You can you can learn it. You can do it. Uh, again, it's just like anything else. Get in there and try it. Get in there and start soldering things. Uh, you'll find that some things don't heat up as much. And you'll think it's a soldering iron. Some things heat up too fast and things melt. That's what I mean. You got to get in there and do it. Next is a desolderer. Uh, I got that on eBay. I really wanted one because I was doing a lot of tube radio stuff at the time and replaced a lot of capacitors. I wanted one. And uh, this particular model was uh, it was on sale through uh, Newark. <coughs> Excuse me. Somebody had one on eBay and I kind of lowballed him and he took the he took it and said, yeah, I'll, I'll sell it. So I could tell when I got it, I don't think it was ever used. But uh, it actually had some issues with it when I got the transformer and so I was bouncing around. So I don't know if, if he had a problem with it and it never worked for him or it happened in shipping, don't know. Either way, I got that fired up and that works great. But it's not always something you can afford. And if you're not going to use it a lot, it's probably not worth it. These actually work. <coughs> very well. Solder suckers. I use those. Uh, I use it more than a solder wing. And then, lastly, over here, this guy here, and you probably saw my last video, me trying that out. So, um, we'll have to see how, how that actually works when I really need to use it. Let's see. But the best advice I can give you, just try try working on things. I mean, you're gonna <laughs> take it from me, the professional. You're you're gonna destroy a lot of stuff. Uh, but you know, all in the all in the interest of science, I guess. Uh, you know, if if it's that near and dear to you, then don't mess with it. But if you find something, or you know, you're gonna throw away a. a computer or power supply, tear it apart. Play with it. See what you can figure out. You'd be surprised just taking things apart or watching some YouTube videos. Just even looking things up old-fashioned like those paper things, they, were they books, I think? Yeah. Something like that. A lot of interesting stuff in them. Uh, again, be careful with the high voltage things, power supplies, vacuum tube stuff, anything like that. Um, and Maybe uh, build some stuff. Watch on uh, watch on lines uh, the way somebody puts something else together. I found I found an article on this. It's a uh, RF signal attenuator. I found it in some old uh, popular electronics, I think, from the 70s. And I thought, well, you know what? I have all those parts laying around, so I built one, and it works. I mean, it works good. All it is is basically a voltage divider. Works fine. Uh, Got the idea for this from Peter of TRX Bench, and basically you can put a uh, a signal. Like I could put an amplifier in here with a thousand watt amplifier, run it out, and I would have a test probe here. That's just uh, an inductive connection, so I won't fry my scope or anything. It's not calibrated or anything, but at least I can see what the signal looks like. You know, again, do I use it that often? No, but it was fun to build. <laughs> uh, so, and for tools you need, definitely, like I said, voltmeter is a good thing to start with. Next thing I look around for is a scope, uh, some type of O-scope. Don't worry too much about the frequency that it's good for because I doubt you're going to be working on, uh, you know, tearing into a UHF uh, transmitter right away. So anything will work. You can watch signals on, you know, from computers or anything. Uh, you can worry about getting something that goes high frequency after you, you've mastered your skills. And again, you'll be like me, you'll start to just compile this kind of stuff. But these are the meters and scopes and everything that I use frequently. So uh, 